A strain gauge rosette is used to measure strains on the free surface of a titanium alloy part. We know the measurement results. And our goal is to determine the principal normal strains and the principal shear strains. We will assume that no yielding has occurred. First, I will write the material properties for titanium alloy. From table 5.2, we obtain Young's modulus is equal to 120 GPA and Poisson's ratio is equal to 0 0.361 for a titanium alloy. We have an equation which shows epsilon at a degree theta will be equal to epsilon x plus epsilon y over 2 plus epsilon x minus epsilon y over 2 times cos 2 theta and plus gamma xy over 2 times sin 2 theta. Let's see what happens when theta is equal to 45 degrees. We will obtain epsilon 45 and it will be equal to epsilon x plus epsilon y over 2 plus gamma xy over 2. And we know that epsilon 45 is equal to 1500 times 10 to the power of minus 6. Since we already know epsilon x and epsilon y, we can have an equation for gamma xy from this formula. So we will get gamma xy is equal to 2 times epsilon 45 minus epsilon x plus epsilon y and this will be equal to minus 1000 times 10 to the power of minus 6. Now we know epsilon x, epsilon y and also gamma xy but epsilon z is missing so we can calculate that too. Since there is no yielding, epsilon z will be equal to minus Poisson's ratio over 1 minus Poisson's ratio times epsilon x plus epsilon y. And it is minus 0 0.361 over 1 minus 0 0.361 times 2200 times 10 to the power of minus 6 plus 1800 times 10 to the power of minus 6. And we obtain epsilon z is equal to minus 2259.8 times 10 to the power of minus 6. Since we know epsilon x, epsilon y, epsilon z and gamma xy, we can now calculate the principal strains. Let's start with epsilon 1. Epsilon 1 will be equal to epsilon x plus epsilon y over 2 plus epsilon x minus epsilon y over 2 square plus gamma xy over 2 square. As you can notice from the Morse circle, this will be the center of the circle, which is A, and this is the radius of the circle, which is R. Let's substitute the values.
when we compute we will obtain epsilon 1 is equal to 2538.5 times 10 to the power of minus 6. Let's say that this is A and this is R. So that epsilon 2 will be A minus R. And when we make the calculations, we will obtain epsilon 2 is equal to 1461.5 times 10 to the power of minus 6. And finally, epsilon 3 will be equal to epsilon z. And we calculated it as minus 2259.8 times 10 to the power of minus 6. Since we calculated the principal normal strains, we can now calculate the principal shear strains. We know that gamma 1 will be equal to epsilon 2 minus epsilon 3. And it is So we know that gamma 1 is equal to 3721.3 times 10 to the power of minus 6. Gamma 2 will be equal to epsilon 1 minus epsilon 3. And it is equal to 4798.5 point three times ten to the power of minus six and finally gamma three will be equal to epsilon one minus epsilon two and it is one thousand seventy seven times ten to the power of minus six and these are all of the principal strains